Welcome. This time I want to just ask a strange question. Do you believe in the formula for the area of a triangle? What I mean by that, here's a, the area formula. We want to know area is half base times height. And what I mean by that, if I draw a triangle, it's got some base length, and I've got some triangle, and the height would be its vertical height. So if this is like a, a triangular skyscraper, literally how high off the ground is the apex of the triangle? That height there is h. So the claim is that the area of this triangle is half the base b times the height h. Well, do you believe that formula? Yeah, I mean, this is something one does in middle school, and then how one checks this formula is usually you encase that triangle in a, in a rectangle, and you know, we'll assume all the corners here are right angles. And the thing to notice is that this height line actually divides that rectangle into two parts, and the right part of the triangle, you can see, is half the right, right, um, half the right portion of the rectangle, and the left portion of the triangle is half the left portion of the rectangle. So actually, just by looking at this picture, you can see the area of the triangle is half the, entire, the, half the area of the entire rectangle. Well, the rectangle is B wide and H high. So yes, the area of the triangle must be half, oops, half of the area of the rectangle, half BH, which is this formula. Great. In fact, we can even push that, push that formula a little bit and suppose that our height is right on the edge of the triangle. That is, I had a triangle that's actually I guess one side vertically upwards. And here's the base. This happens, the height happens to be right on the edge of the triangle. Is the formula still true? Well, in this case, still again in case it's a rectangle, and it's actually simple this in this time. You can actually really say yes, this tri area of this triangle really is half the other rectangle, half b times h. So the reason why I question this formula is that most people stop there. I've, I've seen many many uh, curriculum just stop there for middle school students, and they practice that formula for a long while, and then by the time kids come to high school, they've been playing with this formula forever, so it seems obvious and true, but what if I drew this type of triangle? Here's a crazy one, with base B here, and if this was a tilted skyscraper, I'd have to measure the height like this, vertical to the ground from the apex. Could the area of this beast still be half BH? That seems strange. Now when I actually ask a question of students, here's the response I usually get. Well. Don't be silly, no one would ever use that as the base of the triangle. If you just turn the picture around, you use the long side as the base, and then in which case, you're back to the situation where before, because the height, if you're from that perspective, is back being inside the triangle, so you're like in case one. We know the formula works in case one, so if I just use this red line as the long side of the triangle as the base, use that height, things are fine. Great, I cannot argue with that, that's brilliant. That's probably what most sensible people do. But my question is, really, what if I insist on calling this the base? I just have this predilection for this, this side being the base no matter what, in which case I'm going to force myself to use this as the height. Is this formula still meaningful and valid, or do I have to reject it in this case? And that becomes a real question, actually is a struggle. Um, so the question is, is that formula valid in all cases? And one reason why it's a struggle is you do the same trick as before as actually encasing this thing in a rectangle. I don't believe anymore that that area we're interested in is again half the area of the rectangle. Things are different. All right, well, the point is one should should uh, prove this formula. It is valid. We all know it is valid in cases. I mean, that's what we've been saying for, for all our lives, so it must be true. Let me see if I can just quickly come up with a proof of this. But I still have another question about this formula. This is not the point of this video. I've got something, something else to say about this formula. But just to establish in this case, let's do it. Um, okay, so I've got my, my purple triangle here with the, the bright blue base encased in a rectangle. Everything's right angles. And I see that rectangle is cut into you know, three pieces, pieces, area one, area two, area three. I want a form of area two. Um, it's, it's lopsided and weird, I don't know what to do, but if I just call this length x, because I feel like I need to label some lengths, this height is h, I know what area one is. Area one is half base times height, that's actually the middle case here. So it's half x h. Don't know what area two is, I could work out area three, but I'm going to notice something before I do that, just pausing. Do you see that obviously area 3 is half this rectangle, but it's also this in pink is half the rectangle. So actually I know a form of area 1 plus 2 is the same as area 3. So area of 1 and 2 together, area 1 plus area 2, is actually half its base, which is weird, b plus x, times its height, h. So the area I want, give myself some space, watch me clear the board. Alright, so the area I want, which would be pen 
area one plus area two, take away area one, it's gonna leave me with just area two, equals, all right, area one plus area two, half b plus x times h, minus area one, half x h. Voila, there is the formula for area two. Doesn't look like half bh. Well, obviously, I mean, this x, that x was my invention. So let's see if I can just uh, keep working with this formula. Uh, let maybe expand that first term, half b times h, plus a half x times h, minus half x times h, and voila, area two is half b h again. Great. All right, so here's, here's the point of my video. I've got this, it's a mathematical fact. The area of a triangle is half base times height, no matter which base I care to use and which, height I, and which matching height to go with it. It's always the same area once I've got a base and height established. So intuitively, does that feel right? Mathematically, intellectually, I've got it. No choice. I have to believe area is the same for all these triangles. But what we're saying here is this. Here's a base. If I'm just going to use this as a base no matter what, here's my base B. And I'm going to draw tri lots of triangles with exactly the same height. They're all going to reach up to this height. So what I mean by that is a height H. So if I use this base and this height, the area has to be half B H. If B is the same for all the triangles and H is the same for all the triangles. All the triangles I'm going to draw have to be the same area. But my intuition finds that hard to believe. Here's a triangle. It has the base B and height H. It has whatever that area is. If I tilt it, same base, same height, this green area has to equal that blue area. Do you believe that? Intuitively, I'm just saying intuitively. If I did, did one that sort of tilted more, maybe way to the left, this purple area, or pink area, whatever shape I've got, shade, shade of pink I've got here, has to equal the area of the blue and the green. Do you believe that? In fact, if I just know where I go, if I'm getting some slanty, tilted ones, do you believe that all these possible triangles that I'm drawing in a Sydney Opera House type fashion have exactly the same area? And here's where my intuition gets really pushed. Suppose I drew a triangle that goes out to the right 40,000 miles, way off the screen. You have to wait several years for me to get out there and then come back. And I come back, and there's going to be the merest sliver of a triangle. It still has the base B, it still has the height H. It has to have the same area as all these other triangles, according to the mathematics. But it's just a, just a, a wisp, of, even this is too much area, it's going to be a wisp of an area. Is that, is that really possible? Do you believe that? So my point is, it's still fun to question formulas in mathematics and stretch them to the limit and see where your intuition lies. I have to say they have the same area, I wonder if I really believe it. And let me just end up with a little puzzle, I always end up with a little puzzle. This is not, not going to be much of a puzzle. Um, I actually have it in my geometry book. Volume 2 of the chapter on areas. And here's my puzzle. Suppose Abigail stands at one position, A, and Petrina stands at another position, B. And these two lasses are 20 feet apart. And then Charlene is going to come along, and the three of them are going to make a triangle. So here comes Charlene. Maybe she'll stand here, and wherever Charlene stands, they'll form the three vertices of a triangle. I want this triangle to have area 50 feet squared feet. My question to you is, Give me all the possible locations Charlene could stand so as to create a triangle of area 50 feet squared. And my real challenge is, make sure you just don't give me half the answers. I want the full set of answers to this puzzle. Okay, just a tiny puzzlet. Just something, a little, little thing to think about. Thank you so much. That's it for today.